everybody. Courtney here, the New Mexico Seaching Demon. It's the 12th of January, which is about seven days or so um, later than I actually wanted to do this video. Um, but I'm doing it now, and it's still shitty quality. As soon as I can figure out a new one, you know, that's pretty much what you're going to have to deal with. You know, 90s quality video. Um, so how's everybody doing? Did everybody have a good year? Um, I haven't really had the best 12 days in. Uh, last weekend I wound up going to the ER. Because, oh, what a day that was. So, Friday morning, I get up, I get ready for work, and... Dana's telling me that a pipe had burst, a water pipe. He was like, you know why, you know how we haven't have been having cold water pressure for a while? Well, the pipe burst and now there's a lake under the house. Well, fuck, great. Um, so, you know, as I was leaving, you know, he's, he was just like, not in a good way. And I'm like, you know, I really should just stay home and help him take care of this issue. So on the way to work, I texted my bosses and said, Hey, I got an emergency at home. So I'm not going to come in. And they said, okay, just hope everything is okay. So I get home, uh, with some breakfast, we fix the pipe. Um, well, we had to go into town to get the stuff and then come back in and, um, fix everything. And I glued the pipe under the kitchen sink. Well, when I got up, I felt a very sharp pang in my lower abdomen. And I'm like, oh, great. Now, we're all women here. 99% of us are women here. So, you know, this shouldn't be going into TMI, but you guys kind of have to understand where I'm coming from at this point. Um, I have painful, um, ovulations at times, um, where it feels like I'm being stabbed in the gut and it's, it's not fun like at all. Well, this is the worst one that I'd ever had. So Dane's like, maybe we should go to the ER and I'm just doubled over in pain. No, 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 I don't think i well, we wound up going to the ER. We weren't there very long. They gave me morphine. Didn't help. Um, got two ultrasounds done. And the worst case scenario that we were looking at was an ectopic pregnancy. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. Um, best case scenario would have just been, you know, the ovary uh, burst like it's supposed to do for ovulation. And it was just really painful. Well, there was something like right in the middle of that, and that would have been a ruptured cyst. And that's pretty much what happened, was a very large ruptured cyst that took four days for me to recover from. That was not fun. That was not exactly how I wanted to spend a nice long weekend. It was terrible, in fact. Um, so yesterday, when I went to go see my doctor for the first time for a new patient, and I told her all, you know, everything that was going on, um, what we expect is going on. She said, yep, sounds like PCOS. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's called poly polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, and that is when you have a whole bunch of cysts all over your ovaries. Um, and that's just the start of it. Uh, PCOS makes... Uh, you gain weight rapidly and it is damn near impossible to get it off. Um, very painful periods, very painful, um, ruptures, essentially acne, facial hair. What's going on is that there's a higher level of testosterone and a higher level of insulin that's being, um, administered naturally through your body. So obviously you gain weight and it is very, very difficult to get it off. Well, there's, diets and things that you can do, and I'm going to be starting here pretty quick to help alleviate a lot of the issues associated with PCOS. Um, and the major issue of PCOS is that it causes infertility. So, and I told my doctor, we want to get pregnant. She goes, okay, well, we got to start taking the steps now. So we're going to do the labs. Um, she's going to look at my ultrasounds. I have an appointment with my OBGYN on the 22nd. Um, so, I mean, if you've been watching my videos the last couple of months and you've noticed that I haven't really lost a whole hell of a lot of weight, no matter how hard I've tried, 
I haven't lost a whole hell of a lot of weight, no matter how hard I tried. And now that, you know, um, there seems to be some correlation. Um, also with PCOS is that some women with it have a very low vitamin D or have vitamin D deficiency. Years ago when I was living in Truth of Consequences and was starting to go see a doctor, she said that, oh, you have very low vitamin D and I don't understand how somebody who lives in New Mexico um, has low vitamin D and I said, well, I don't go outside. Didn't click, didn't even think about it, anything like that until I was doing some research and um, about PCOS diets and they said many women with PCOS have low vitamin D. So eat these foods and I'm just like, hey, that makes sense. So, you know, now I have this other thing that, you know, is going to be answering a lot of questions that I have been having for years. And it is the first time that that has even come up with me ever like no other um doctor like because i've gone to the, i've wound up in the hospital twice because of ruptured cysts they hurt i've had two miscarriages they hurt and they suck and nobody has has really said anything like oh i mean i've had a couple doctors say well you know cysts mm. But that's it. But nobody said, well, maybe we should test for such a thing. You know, they've done thyroid. You know, they've tested my thyroid. They said, that's fine. Um, oh, your other hormone levels are fine. But nobody has ever really thought about this. And this is something that when we were going down the checklist, my doctor was like, yep, yep, yep. So we're going to know for sure here in the next couple weeks. And in my next video, I'm going to give you guys an update and, and what um, to expect and... Um, then hopefully I will, you know, in the next few months actually have changed my, cause there's a lot I have to change about my, my lifestyle. It's my, my, um, activity level, my eating habits, my sleep habits. I have to do a sleep test because sleep apnea is coming up. Um, you know, there's a lot I have to do in order to be healthier. Um, for 2019 and really for the rest of my life. I mean, Dan and I are getting married at the end of September and I would like to start our marriage off with health, <laughs> you know, and no debt. The cats are running around. So that's pretty much what kept me from, um, doing my video last week. And then of course there was a, um, consequential issue that came along with the ruptured cyst that I just don't want to talk about because that's just that really is TMI and that was horribly painful um, but that has cleared itself up um, thanks to medications and whatnot and my um, doctor has given me some prescriptions for um, acne medication and wash so and I know you guys can't really tell but I do have acne and scarring I'm going to be 34. This nonsense should have gone away when I was 22. You know, in my opinion. Yeah, for what that's worth. But anyway, um, if the lighting seems slightly better, even though it's still shitty, um, I put a small washcloth up. I'm washed out! I put up my LED light. So that way I can try and give you guys a hopefully a better view of what's going on. Um, but other than my health, I mean, work is getting crazy. Um, as you know, I work for the state of New Mexico and yes, we are starting to get affected by the government shutdown, but not nearly as terrible as some other people. Um, we just have to kind of deal with it right now. So, um, but, uh, and we're also possibly facing Dane works for Smith's who's owned by Kroger. And I don't know if you guys have heard anything in the news. If you know anybody that works for Smith's, um, it's a possibility that they might be striking soon because Kroger will not budge on their absolutely completely unreasonable and bullshit demands for their employees. So, um, if they don't come to some sort of agreement soon, they're possibly going to have to strike and Dane doesn't have a choice. He has to pick it or else he's out of the union and then he goes and once the strike is over he's right back down at the bottom of the totem pole at work so there's you know there's just a lot of stuff going on that we're kind of concerned about 
So, but you know, we're we're gonna get through it. We're going to get through it, fine style. And how am I doing it? Through a cross stitch and reading. That reminds me. Please hold. I have returned. But you didn't even notice. I probably went from here to here. Um, so I am a big reader. Um, what are you doing? Are you being bad? Lay down. Be good. Lay down. Bandit Rose, lay down. Thank you, Bobby. Um, so I am a big reader. In fact, um, we have our second room is basically our library. Dane had to like, um, it's actually kind of warm in the house right now. And it's freezing outside. Um, actually, actually starting to warm up. Julie, we had a uh, 12 inches of snow. Would you like it? I hate this shit. I hate winter. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, one whole side of our room of that room is our library and it's just full of books of all kinds i read all kinds of books um what i just finished reading was two books from liz carlisle one was um the bride wore scarlet and then the bride wore pearls i don't know why that was so hard to say <laughs> they're actually pretty good um they're romance they're historical romance novels um or novelettes basically from Avon um, pretty entertaining obviously you know it's like 50 75 percent about attraction and and sex and then the rest of it is everything else that might be going on hi you want to say hi I look there hey look look Here's the other one. You can't see her because she's just under the camera. Diamond. Uh, so anyway, I mean, they were very entertaining um, for what they were. I tend to... That's Missy. Here you go. I tend to read at night before we go to bed because it helps calm my mind down from the day and helps me to get to sleep a little bit easier. Um, I tend to suffer from insomnia from time to time to time, so it helps me to read. Um, what I'm reading now is this big old beauty of limericks. If you know anything about limericks, they're naughty, very, very naughty and hilarious and somewhat offensive to more sensitive minded people but they are very entertaining um, and they do give me a chuckle um, um, and I just started reading it a couple nights ago but I mean I'm either really really tired or they're starting to put me to sleep that much faster who knows but pretty entertaining pretty fun what you doing if you just want to hang out let's hang out I don't know if it's me, but her eyes are starting to get greener, less yellow, more green. What are you doing? No! Cats. Get down from there. Come here. Come on. Missy, you're going to get hurt. Fine. Whatever. Whatever. Just don't get hurt. You might just see her tail wagging around because she just has to be everywhere. You going to get down? No. Whatever, cat. Um, so, with 2019, as I have stated many times, this is my year of the Stitching Demon, which basically means I am no longer just sticking to one or two or three or four whips. Why no? I started this year off with 15. Did I start them all on one day? No, because I'm not a fucking psychopath. But... <laughs> Um, 
as you have seen, you've seen this a couple of times. This is my planner. This is my stitchy planner for the year of 2019. Um, I have only gone as far as the 2nd of March because, because I plan these things. I don't do these note these things with notes anymore. So at the end of February, there's only one day. So what do I do? I take the project I'm working on that day, which is supposed to go for three days anyway, and it goes into the first week of March, so the first two days. So after that starts a whole brand new rotation, and in that brand new rotation, I'm going to be having two new webs already. Why? Because two people have asked me to do some stuff for them. One I'll be able to show you right now, um, the other one I can't because she hasn't picked it out yet. But when she does, I'll be able to show you guys. So, um, so first I want to show you a small haul that I did not order in 2019. So, my year of stitch, stitch from stash essentially, like I, I, I'm not stitching from, okay. It's not the official like Stephanie, um, Oso, Oso, Os, Miss Oso Crafty. It's not the, I don't do that official thing. What I have planned for 2019, my resolution is not to buy any more cross stitch patterns or kits. For me, not to do this. Because I have three drawers full of regular cross stitch kits, one drawer full of Christmas cross stitch, and then you see those binders and books and magazines right there? It's all cross stitch too. Those are just cross stitch magazines and cross stitch gold and cross stitch crazy and some cross stitch books and Hades and Artisies and Mystic Stitch and uh, this right here is, is a sable. I will never finish all of these things. And then of course in my kits too. So the plan is for this year is to stitch, to have as many whips as possible within reason because and to not build on it because I want to be able to kind of get my stash down a little bit. Obviously with the patterns it's a lot harder because they don't go nearly as fast as kits do. Many of them. They're big things. <sighs> but the kits could probably go in a couple of rounds, you know. Definitely by the end of the year I could have four or five completions already. Who knows? We'll see. But anyway, let me get to, to that before we get to the to the whips. And actually, I'm going to do them in order. Um, one whip that I will not be showing you was a one-day whip, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't watch my stuff. But um, many of you know what Regina, the, the sweary stitcher, is doing for Yvonne. The night owl stitcher so I, I added in a piece of my own um, I got that done like liquidy split um, and I really enjoyed it I thought it was really fun and it was a fun little little thing um, I don't want to share what it is yet because I don't know what Virginia is doing and I know that this is like a super secret top secret project that she's doing for her um, and for a very, very, um, special reason. Um, so, and to be perfectly honest, I'd never even watched Yvonne's videos until after I heard about what had happened and, and what we were doing all of this for. So I, in fact, while I started stitching that thing, I watched her, I went back and watched her first videos and she's a wonderful human being. And it's an absolute tragedy what happened to her and her husband. And my heart just goes out to her. It really does. Her entire family. Um, but that being said, let's get back to the haul. Okay. So I want to show you first things that my friends have given me. These are given to me. I did not buy these. Um, for Christmas, um, at work, we did a cherry pie. I think I explained it where, um, we select somebody and that person has written, um, on a piece of paper, like their favorite hobby, their favorite color their favorite sports teams, things like that. And then we just go and find some nice little gift for them for Christmas. Well, the person that I got 
turns out she got me so it was actually kind of cool um she got me in fact i even share this on um the last uh stitch with me that i did but i want to share it again she got me two of these two candles because i love cinnamon the smell of cinnamon and i haven't even used them yet i'm gonna oh god two packets of Swiss Smith cocoa. I haven't opened those yet either. Um, and she got me a box of JMP coats. Floss. These I might actually want to do something other than cross stitch with them. Um, now I know that you can do bracelets um, and they actually give some ideas but um, I don't think that they're really kind of explained very well in here. Um, so if anybody has, or if you do make bracelets or anything out of these, I might, you know, like do lanyards or something, um, or, or scissor fobs or key fobs or something. Um, that's what I would like to do with these because the, I mean, the colors are just so vibrant and, you know, I don't want them just sitting on my shelf forever and not be used. And I think it would be nice to have like, not just one hobby going. And this could be something that I could do at my desk when I'm like really friggin' bored, you know? So if you know of any like fairly easy, um, ideas for, excuse me, for bracelets, um, lanyards, uh, dog collars, anything, let me know. Just mention it down in the comments and we'll talk and, um, I may put them to use. And then the last thing that she got me was this little cute cross stitch kit. It says, Love makes my house a home. Got some little bunnies from Janlin. Uh, who, who designed this? Ursula Michael. Signed by Ursula Michael. You know, the glare, the lighting quality of my camera but it is really pretty and yes you know and I have made a, a, a promise with myself not to do a whole lot of stuff from Walmart and this is from Walmart and I know that but that's okay because it's really cute and I will do this um, this is you've probably seen me hold this up before because I have a kit exactly like this but this is not my kit this is actually from my friend I got this for her um, and she, uh, she said, you know, what? I, I'm not going to, in fact, all of these came from her and I'm going to show them to you all, but she, she wants me to do this for her. So this is going to be the first one that I add into the next rotation, March, the next March rotation. So like the rotation that I got going on right now is January, February. So March, March is rotation exact pretty much. This is going to be the first thing added in and it's a uh, butterfly and bluebell. It's from Moldova, I can tell you that. It's anchor thread, um, a 14 count fabric. I think it's either 14 or 18 count. I couldn't tell you really. Hold on, yes, I can. I'm a damn liar. No, I couldn't really tell you. But anyway. So she asked me to do this for her, and I'm going to do this. It's called Butterfly and Bluebell. It's so pretty. Take your time. It's cool. So I look forward to adding that into the, to the rotation. This is called The Whisper of God, designed by Diane Arthurs. Um, uh, as you all know, I am not religious, so this little saying I want to take out I might put something else in there, something because it says, let us be silent that we may hear the whisper of God, Emerson. Um, maybe I can find like an old Celtic saying or a Viking saying or just some funny little quip from Shakespeare, perhaps, or per well, I mean, a limerick would not go well with a butterfly, but I love butterflies. I absolutely love butterflies and I love this design. This is the only thing that I would change is, and I'm going to change is the, is removing this. And putting something else right there. 
maybe I not, might, might not add anything there at all. I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, let me know, and I'll think. I'll, I'll give it a think. This is from Artiste, called Best Things in Life. Um, I don't know who designed it. It was made in Turkey. It's actually very pretty. Best things in life are not things. Sorry. Sorry for the glare. But it's very colorful. It's so pretty. I love the bird. I love the flowers. Little. It looks like there's a little butterfly right there. Tiny little butterfly. Cute. Cute. This is Mr. and Mrs., also from Artiste Embroidery Kit. This is actually stamped. Has the gloss in it. Um, and so obviously with stamped, you just follow it along. So, Mr. and Mrs. And again, I have a copy of this, my own, and, and David gave this to me as well. So I might do that for a friend. And then this is Gardening Welcome, designed also designed by um, Diane Arthur, the same one who did um, The Whisper of God, and all it says is, welcome. But in gardening way, Seiku. I do like that. I really do like that. In fact, I'm, I might do this for my mom. Because her and her boyfriend kind of have like a rustic thing going on with their house. Um, let's see. I don't think that they're into gardening, though. But those are those were gifted to me by my friend, and now I will show you my purchases. First, I'll show you this purchase. So I had seen a couple of other stitchers do this. Um, the first time I had seen it was I think her name is Tish. I could very well be wrong, but it's the Southern Ladybird. Southern Lady Bug. And if she watches my videos and I butchered that I'm sorry. Um, she she's a newer Diamond. Diamond. Thank you. Um, she's a newer uh, tuber, hobby tuber, I like to call her, because she doesn't just do cross it, she does crochet. Um, she crochets dolls, and they are really super cool. Um, she's from Mississippi, I think I could be lying, but anyway, she she had started this some time ago, and she was saying that she wasn't really enjoying it because the way that she starts something, she starts on the bottom uh, right, bottom right, and then work, works her way up. Um, so for some reason, she had started on the top left, like many of us do. And she she just didn't feel right doing it, and I and I kind of and if she does watch this, I you know really anybody that isn't sure like how you should start a big project, and this is a big project. If you're comfortable going from the bottom of the of the piece up, go from the bottom of the piece up. If you're comfortable going from right to left, go right to left instead of left to right. If you're comfortable starting in the middle, start in the do whatever you want believe it or not there's not a whole lot of rules that go into this hobby there's there's some you know some like cross stitches an X tent stitch is a half stitch um, make sure that they're kind of you know all facing the same direction just for for looks um, your back does not have to be perfect um, and your technique is your technique and however you feel comfortable doing it that's how you feel comfortable doing it but, um, so I kind of hope that if she does start it again, she does start it the way that she likes it because it's so fucking cool. And then I saw another stitcher from the Steel City Stitchers. I forget which one of the four is doing it, but when I saw it, I was like, I think it's Aaron. Maybe Eric, right? Uh, I don't know. One of the four. She's doing this. And when I saw it, I was like... I have to do this because it just, it's so Americana. Now this is something that a lot of other stitchers were starting last year or back in 2017 because this is when it was released and sure there's a bunch that have already finished it, but I'm only 
This is new to me. And let me tell you, it's a sampler right off the bat. I don't like samplers. I don't. I don't do them. I just did just not my jive. But when I saw this one, I said, I have to do it. Let Freedom Ring from Lila's studio. There are some stitches in there that I have never done before. That would be the Algerian eyelets, I think. Yes, I believe there is Algerian eyelets. I'm not going to pull the thing out to, show, to, to see for sure, but I'm, I'm sure that many of you guys have been stitching on this too. But the reason why I love this is that because it's so Americana. It's so cool. You know, it's the history of our great country. Um, it's what our, our country is founded on. Um, let freedom ring. Fourth of July, Independence Day, Anno Domini, 1776 is when we are the, the birth of our country. Melissa's well, chewing lots of plastic. Um, this says, um, in the uh, flag, it says America. Underneath, it's Independence Hall, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States, from 1732 to 1753. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land by the Liberty Bell. And this is something that if I don't start it in March or June, I'll definitely start it next year. But maybe start it in June because um, even though I might be have, or in fact, I will be having two new products going into the March rotation in June. I still want to add quite a few more, but we'll see. So, and if I don't add this, I'm definitely going to be adding in a Ronnie row. So that's a big pattern too, but this is supposed to be huge. I look forward to it. I really do. And then my last and final purchase of 2018 for, I think it was in 2018. Damn, well better have been or else I lied to myself. Um, I think it's, I mean, there's a bunch of people out there that I watch that do Mirabilia's. Um, Belinda, the Aussie stitcher, she does like a thousand of them a day. Um, Sam from Sammy J Stitches, she's doing one or two, I think. Yes, Foxglove and the Mira Mask. Um, and then Tori, she's doing one for her daughter, which is the April Fairy. I think. I very, like I said, I very well to be lying. But anyway, I was just kind of curious to see if there was one for March, and there is. It's the March Aquamarine Fairy by Nora Corbett from Marabilia Designs. I know it's really hard to tell, but it is extremely beautiful. So pretty. Um, I'm a March baby. I was born at the end of March, so I get to celebrate my birthday all month long. Ha ha ha. So, um, don't think I'm going to be adding it in. <laughs> I might, I might could, I might could, um, add this into the March rotation too, because it is, it's March and it's my birthday. Who knows? Maybe I will. I mean, think about that. Maybe. And then I have two mirrors going this year. We'll see. So those are my purchases. And for 2019, I have promised myself that I will not buy any more patterns and kits. That I will not buy any patterns or kits. I started watching a couple more tubers, boss tubers. One of them is Sabine. Sabina, sorry, Sabina Stitch and Wrap. She lives in Germany, and she is just, she's awesome. She is quite the, um, she's very, um, very soft-spoken, um, very sweet demeanor. Um, but here's my problem with her. She is going to make me break my promise to myself because she has the entire Celtic woman set from Lavender and Lace, which is the summer, autumn, spring winter and Christmas women. Those are currently sitting in my wish list in Amazon. 
She also has a couple of others that are music related and if I'm not good, I'm going to have to find out exactly what they are and then find those and then put those in my Amazon wish list too because I don't want them. It's going to be very damn difficult for me <laughs> to maintain this um, vow that I have made. I hear them when I'm moving around and it always causes me concern. Um, so hopefully, hopefully... <laughs> I cannot um, get into buying more, but we'll see. Um, I've also started watching um, Nordic Stitcher. I should have mentioned the last time. Bart, he's um, he's still fairly new to Stitcher too. So is Sabina. They've only, I mean, you could basically say that, that together they've been stitching for a year. He's um, got a couple of really cool things going on. He's got a long dog sampler. Um, I think a couple of couple of them maybe just want to especially he's doing um death by cross stitch and then he's doing a christmas one he's doing um a pop art marilyn monroe um he's also doing or he did the stark banner um so he's got some stuff going on that are that's really cool he he's all he also has like one of his early videos um like he kind of tells a little bit of, about where he lives in sweden um I've also started watching um, Madam Ice, Kate, who's in South Carolina. She's only got like four videos up, four or five videos up. Um, she's she's fun. <laughs> I like her. I like her style. Um, she's got a few things going. Um, she's a lot of fun to watch. She's she's very entertaining. And then one person that I should have mentioned them last time, but I didn't because. For some reason, it just didn't pop up into my mind. But um, Kaz Stitches, I don't remember her actual name, but she's down in Australia. She's only got one video up right now. She is also a fairly new stitcher. And she seriously did the big go, big, go big or go home. She started off with a small thing, and then she went right into a hate. And I think she's doing one of the steampunk clock people. I think I think that's what she's doing because um, it's been a while since I watched the video but I was just like that's kind of what I did <laughs> I didn't go into a hate but I did go into full covers like pretty much right away I did two small things and then I went into a bigger thing like got my feet wet and then jumped into the deep end and that is how I think every good cross stitcher should do it it's just okay now you kind of have the basic idea now go find something that you really truly enjoy so, um, so that's really cool. She's really cool. Um, hopefully she puts out another video. That would be really cool to see. So, um, all right, let's get to the whips. So I have, uh, so I'm just going to go in order. First, I'm going to start with my focus piece. Um, as you guys know, this is a, let me get. I have the binders here because, you know, I want to be, like, right on top of it this time. Kind of. So this is my focus piece. It's Three Baby Dragons from Chinese Sun's Cross Stitch Xingli, designed by Misty Woodkey. Um, this is the one, this is the Cheryl project. This is the one that I'm doing for my um, good friends in California. If I can get it into the thing, that would be great. Um, I am doing this four over one tent stitch on 18 count uh sand ada and it's already starting to soften up so much i've gotten a lot done look at that and now i can't see oh there you go there we go now i can see this is about a third of the way down maybe a bit more pretty fucking cool um this was actually a bit longer so I trimmed it down um, this is the one that I take to work and this is where I'm at right now getting into the second baby dragon for a while we didn't know what this little curly thing was and I was like what is the curly thing I'm trying to figure it out it's the base it's the part it's the handle to the candle <laughs> so it's pretty cool 
and then, um, you know, this is, yeah, like I said, this is the one that I take to work, this is the one that I work on five days a week for sure, at least an hour a day, um, when I'm on my lunch break, um, and then on Wednesdays I take it out and I work on it all Wednesday afternoon when I get home from work, so. That has been getting a lot of love, and I am really, really looking forward to working more on this. I'm sorry I kicked you. Don't fight me. Stop it. Rude. I accidentally punted the cat. Um, the goal for this is I definitely want it done by September at the latest. At the earliest, I'd like to get it done this summer, but we'll see. Here we go. Um, that, like I said, that's also the um, focus piece. Um, the next one was my first official written down on the calendar whip, and it's also my first finish, and it's also my first fully finished object. This is called Puppy and Stocking. Um, again, I put it in my finishing folder. Um, so I don't remember, oh, from Design Works. Cute little thing. Took me, if I had like just stayed on it for one day, it would have taken me one day. But I started this on the Thursday, on the 3rd, and then on the 4th was when everything freaking just blew up with my health. So, sorry for the lighting guys. Oh, there we go. That's a little bit better. And it came with this cute little frame. There's no glass. And it just sits there on my shelf. Well, this shelf over here, actually. Because we haven't put anything away. So, um, most likely tomorrow night we'll be taking everything down. Hopefully. Um, and this will be going away until the end of the year. So, there it is. First, first, first official whip. First start of 2019. Uh, first finished, first fully finished. Check that out. One and done, man. Love it. Okay, next one. It's Legend of Dragoon. You guys all see, have seen it, a, you know, a bunch. This is what I'm working on. And I can tell you, I am... Now that I can see it, I'm right down here. <laughs> but that's not what it's going to look like when you see it, I don't think. I don't know. Because every time I, like, pull it out and I'm stitching it, I'm like, what is this supposed to be? I don't get it. This is the top of the roof? Is it a building? I don't know. I think it's a building. This thing is heavy. Can you believe it? This thing is heavy. It smells like dirt. But, you know, it's almost two years old, so. Oh. Yeah. Here it is. Two, three. Three full rows of pages done. And I'm now into the fourth row. So, into the fourth row. It's starting to get some other kind of background going. Other than sky and moon and person. And I told Dane when I put it away on um, Tuesday, I'm like, look, it's Sauron's tower. <laughs> they just put an eye right there. I love it when ne negative space makes shit that like makes no sense to the product that you're working on. It's great. It's, you know, it's a fun little entertaining little detail. But there's Legend of Dragoon, where I'm at now. This is being done on 25 count even weave, bone, 25 count bone, even weave, um, stitched one over one using DMC plus. Um, this one got started in 2017. This is my oldest whip right now. Is it going to be done this year? No. Um, I think by the end of the year, I would like to have the f well let's be realistic here um i think i would like to be at least halfway through the fourth row 
Um, if I can get further, that would be friggin' fantastic. Because the goal that I had set for the end of the year for 2018 was to just have the third row of pages finished, but that I could start there was pretty freaking spectacular to me. So, um, and then of course I worked again on, um, so that was the sixth, seventh and eighth was that. And then Wednesdays is always focus piece. And then what I'm working on right now is something called I love dogs, um, from artiste. It's an artiste mini. That's what I'm working on right now. And this is the last day of it. I'm doing this on a six inch Q-snap because it's small enough. This is what I'm working on it. It finds my face. This is where I'm at. That is actually a lot, <laughs> believe it or not, given everything that's been going on. And I had school this morning. Um, so we're in a new term. And what I try and do with my school is just kind of cram it into the weekend because that way I can just focus on work and stitching for the rest of the week. But um, even with having to do a lot of reading this morning, still got a whole lot done. I got the front, I got the black part of the border and the tennis ball. These are tennis balls done on Thursday. On Friday, I got the tan part, got the, the paws in, and then I started working on Bruce. I'm calling him Bruce the Moose. And then today, obviously, I got a lot more done in, in Bruce. And then, of course, I'm going to keep finish, working on him. And Bruce, at least, will be finished by tonight. And then um, I get to put him away until the end of February. So I'm going to put him back on the few snap. You guys will get to see how I do this. So snap one end. Snap another end. Snap a side. Now you guys can't really tell very well. Yes, and that's my back, by the way. Because I have no shame. And then I just roll it. Until it's nice and taut. There you go. So there you go. That's my whips. As of now. Um, I will be getting back to this once I'm done with the video. And I, I can get to... Um, back to watching some YouTube. I am so far behind on all my YouTube channels. I just got caught up with Tori today. I got caught up with um, Jules yesterday. He gave me a really cool shout out and I fangirled like a bitch. It was great. Um, so <laughs> I still haven't caught up with Sam. I haven't caught up with a few. Um, right now I'm watching Legends of History, which has nothing whatsoever to do with cross stitch. It's just like, um, like the history of some figures in old religions, mythology, occults, pirates, serial killers, um, urban legends, just things like that. Sorry about that. Um, and it's really entertaining. I like that. I dig that kind of thing. So those are my whoops that I have already started. So what is for the rest of January? So starting tomorrow, I will be starting on Looney Tunes. I will start on Wile E. Coyote, Genius at Work. I can't show you it like up close because that's just the pattern. And it seems to be pretty easy. Maybe I'll get it done in three days. I don't know. So I'll start that tomorrow. And then Wednesday will be Focus. And then I Love Cats. I'll show you that one. I Love Cats, also from Artiste Mini. Super cute. Oh my god, some of these are just so adorably cute. It's gross. And then on the 20th, I start my very first page. That will be the Butterfly Ball from Amy Stewart. And I am thinking, and the way that I want to stitch this one is kind of going to be like a so like I'll do the first page and then I'll do the second page and then I'll go down and do the first page of that one. So that'll be one, two, three, and then go down one, two, three, and then do, 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 do. kind of do like a diagonal with the pages so that this will be, you know, it would normally be the last page will be the last page and it'll just be kind of interesting to watch it grow in that way. So that's how I plan on doing that. And I also plan on doing this 
tent as well because it is super confetti heavy and because I can't. Because it's Amy Stewart. You don't do an Amy Stewart and expect it's just going to be, you know, simple. And then focus. And then Oriental Butterfly. So this will be on the 24th. I will start this one. Which has couching. And I think I mentioned before, I've never done couching before. So that'll be interesting to learn to do that. And then on the 27th, I will start Monopoly, which is in my other binder. This is the 1985 edition of Monopoly. And this is important to me. I've mentioned it before because I was born in 1985. So, you know, duh. <laughs> you know it just makes a lot of sense. That that's what I will do. So. That will be on the 27th, and then on the 31st, I will start Map of Ireland. I'm getting there, people. There we go, Map of Ireland. Now we're on the 31st of January. And I'll be sure to put that in a, the rotation for March too, <laughs> to actually, you know, pull that back out again in March because it's Ireland and March makes sense. So that's what I've got coming up for the whole month of January. So to recap, tomorrow I start Looney Tunes, which will be Wiley e. Coyote, Genius at Work. 16th is my focus. 17th I start I Love Cats. 20th is Butterfly Ball. 23rd again, um, Focus, 24 is Oriental Butterfly, 27th is Monopoly, 30th is The Focus, and then 31st is Map of Ireland, and that goes into February, and then we'll talk about February in February. So at this point, I will say adieu. Um, I would like to first welcome all my new subscribers to my channel. I absolutely appreciate the fact that you don't mind that I'm a little bit insane. Um, I swears. And on occasion, I have a tendency to bitch <laughs> a lot. Um, in fact, a couple of my stitch with me's can sometimes turn into stitch and bitches. Um, and rants. I do have a tendency to rant. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, but I'm pretty sure you have, all of my former Floss 2 videos are gone. I have deleted them. They are no mo. They are gone. Um, so it's just Stitch With Me's and uh, crap. and uh, my X Stitch vids. And um, I also uh, I'm kind of think of doing a couple of other things. Maybe like doing haul videos of not, you know, not just cross stitch videos, um, but like you know, going to the store haul videos or um, Tori does these, this is what we have for dinner, um, like what we had to eat this week. Um, I'm thinking of kind of doing one of those things maybe, um, just kind of, you know, shake it up, you know, um, and have me a hobby tube, not just a cross stitch tube. We'll see. Oh, also one of the things my doctor told me yesterday, she goes, you need to drink more regular water. Like, but I love these things. These are sparkling eyes. This is not a paid promotion. These are sparkling eyes. You can't really tell the label. Uh, this is black cherry. This is absolutely delicious. You can get these at Smith's. I get these for a dollar a piece. And I prefer these to Powerade's um, and sodas especially. They have absolutely nothing in them. No calories, no fat, no sodium, no carbs, no sugars, no protein. It's flavored water. Literally, it's for those of you who are trying to like quit soda. This is a really good alternative because it's, you still that, get that carbonated fizziness, um, but without all of the unhealthy crap. So this is what I drink a lot, and I need to be drinking more regular, plain, unflavored water. Uh, so <sighs> that's it. 
I think I managed to keep this under an hour for once. Go me. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on in the house for the next month or two. Um, especially as we get closer to the wedding, we are going to be having the reception at our house. So, <sighs> so much cleaning we're going to be doing. Like deep, 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 deep cleaning. Um, you know, because you don't have your mother over and expect that she's not going to say something like, Honey, that's the best. There's a layer of dust. Because that's my mom. Actually, she's, well, she can be, but she's not nearly so bad. So, not like she used to be. So, anyway, um, I'll go ahead and sign off at this point. You guys have yourself a great day. Enjoy the rest of January. I'll be back in February. I know it's going to be like so soon because we're already, what, halfway through January? And February's coming up just like that. Where did my power button go? Um, I want to see calendar month. I have an Amazon Fire that I like never use except to like watch videos, put on my shopping list. Meh. Anyway, first weekend of February. <laughs> expect to see this face again um tomorrow however i will be doing my first stitch of, stitch with me for the year and you'll actually get to see me start working on wiley coyote if i don't start them without you so you guys have yourself a great night uh um happy halfway through the month um to those of you who are federal workers just you know i know this is not the best time um, hopefully everything will start to just, hopefully something will happen and you guys won't be out of work for long. Um, uh, my thoughts are with you guys. Um, and for anybody who needs them, I give you my positive energy. You guys have a great day. Peace.